like a hero, but I can't fly. I know you never crash if you don't try. Took it to the edge, now I know why. Never gonna live if you're too scared to die. Gonna disconnect from the hardwire. Time to raise a flag for the ceasefire. Staring down the hole inside of me. Open up my heart like a shotgun, blinded by the light of a new sun. Get up, get up, get out, and get done. For the first time, I feel like someone breaking down the walls in my own mind, keeping my faith for the bad times. Get up, get up, stand like a champion. Take it to the world, gonna sing it like an anthem. Find it on my own. Never gonna live if you're too scared to die. I'm so alive. I'm so alive. I'm so alive. You can make it on a wish if you want to. You can make it on a wish if you want to. I'm so. Welcome to LCBC. Would you stand and join us? I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I made. I was breathing, but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my turn till I
cross has the final word. The cross has the final word. Sorrow may come in the darkest night, but the cross has. chases us down and pursues us relentlessly. Thank you that we can declare this truth today that the cross does have the final word. 
that you have the final word on who we are. No matter what we have faced, where we've been or what we have done, you call us redeemed, renamed, forgiven, and free. Thank you for a love like that. Thank you for the stories that we will get to listen to and celebrate today. Stories that point to your goodness, your faithfulness, your trustworthiness, and how much you love us. Thank you for making a way for us through your son, Jesus. God, we love you and we pray all these things in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. It was so good singing with you. My name is Lisa. Why don't you share your name with a few people around you and then go ahead and have a seat. Well, welcome to LCBC Hazleton. Man, we're, we're pumped that you decided to join us today because we built this space for you. We want a space where you can come and you can engage in your faith journey wherever you are. So thanks for coming. Man, does that building not look awesome, too? I love all the chrome. I think we should wrap our building in chrome here. What do you guys think? That would be pretty good. No, so excited for Hazleton. They launched last week as our 11th campus. They had over 450 in attendance. And man, I just, I can't wait to see what God is gonna continue to do through his people in that region and Hazleton area. Just so excited for them. And excited to have you all here with us tonight on this holiday weekend, Thanksgiving weekend. I hope that turkey stuffing is settling down in there. I hope the tryptophan is wearing off. We're getting a little energy now, right? Hey, we would love to know that you're here tonight as well, so do me a favor. Grab a pen from the seat in front of you, pull out the program you were handed on the way in, and fill out that About You page for us. Again, we want to know that you're here with us tonight. Now, maybe this is your first time here. Maybe someone invited you who's getting baptized. If that's the case, we are especially glad you're here. We would love to have you back, and we would love to have you come to an environment we call newcomers, mainly because it's a chance for us to get to know you a little bit more while you get to know us as a church. And so to sign up for newcomers, you can grab your program, check the box, or you can hop on lcbcchurch.com. Either way, come join us at the next newcomers. All right, in just a moment, the ushers are gonna come and they'll be sending a basket down your row. This is our chance tonight to say, God, I love you and I wanna show you that by trusting you with the first part of my finances. And so if you haven't already done that online, take that opportunity as the basket passes. Also, rip off your About You card, throw that in the basket as it passes as well. All right, I can't believe it, but Thanksgiving is over, so now it is officially the Christmas season. It is now legal to listen to Christmas music. It's now legal to watch Christmas movies, all right? I was out today setting up my outside Christmas lights, and while I was doing that, I was just thinking to myself, I now know why people leave these things up till March. <laughs> They're pain in the butt. No, but it's time for us to start thinking about Christmas especially Christmas here at LCBC. Man, I love our Christmas Eve gatherings. Essentially, we just do a regular LCBC gathering, but it's kicked up a few notches, right? It's kind of on steroids. And we kick it up a few notches, not for us who attend, but for those of us who are not here yet. For our friend, neighbor, coworker that we wanna invite, and we want them to hear that there's a God who loves them, who cares for them, who has a plan and a purpose for their life, and who offers them hope. We were challenged a few weeks back as a church 
to kind of think through this one question differently. And the question was this, what am I here for? Right? Maybe we need to think more so about who am I here for? And I think that applies to all of us in this Christmas season. Who am I here for in this Christmas season? Who in my life needs to hear the life-changing power of Jesus? Who needs to hear about that? As you leave tonight, I'd love to have you stop by our Christmas ticket areas, pick up a couple tickets with the intention of inviting and bringing that person with you, whoever that is for you. Grab a couple tickets, hand one to them, say, come check out Christmas Eve at LCBC. I've got a seat for you. Can't wait for Christmas Eve here at LCBC. All right, a few more things. It's not too late for you to jump in and be a part of this initiative. We've been in the past few weeks called Be Rich, where we're, we're talking about how we can show love to the community, to the world around us. You can go to berich.org, lcbcchurch.com, sign up to be a part. Also, as you leave tonight, we still have sponsor children available from World Vision. Love to have you stop by one of those booths. And your Operation Christmas Child shoebox is due back today, okay, this weekend. If you don't have it, that's all right. Because we can collect it up until Monday, and we have Monday gatherings, okay? So come on back Monday night, bring someone with you, bring your shoebox, we'll get you squared away. Again, glad you're here with us tonight, excited to have you here. We're launching a new series, though, next week, and it's called All Due Respect. And so for a little bit more about that series and what it's going to be all about, let's check out the screens together. Hey you, yeah you adults out there with your fancy briefcases and your keys to everything. You have a lot of responsibility and now get to drive cars, give reasons like because I said so, buy whatever food you want, even broccoli. Ugh, hate broccoli. But you know what you don't seem to do so well? R-E-S-P-E-C-T, respect. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. You can't just say with all due respect before you do something mean. That doesn't make it not mean. It's still mean. We're watching everything you do. I mean, I say please and thank you because you guys taught me to. But when I do what you do, you guys yell at me for being rude. What's up with that? So, adults, listen. I know you always check under the closet for the monster drawer. And know why ice cream is a bad idea for dinner. But maybe you could take a point or two and love and respect everybody. Everybody. And maybe just let us have ice cream for dinner sometime. I mean, just think about it. Yeah, man. I would love to take that little guy home with me. That would be, that would be a blast. I'm really excited about the series that we're going to be launching next week. Several weeks ago, when the email came out to the team that works on our gatherings, that uh, David had decided that we needed to go right at this thing because you and I are living in the midst of a culture where the theme of our day is selectively informed, offended outrage. And so we're going to go right at that thing. And so I want to ask you to make sure that you are here every single week of that series and bring someone with you. And my promise to you is that we will do our very, very best. We will bring our A game, all the people who work on our gatherings, in order to help us navigate that difficult issue of our day from a biblical and godly perspective. And so you don't wanna miss it, and I wanna see you here. I don't know about you, but I love this time of year. This is, the, this, these five days, from Thanksgiving Thursday through the first day of buck season, I'm not even a hunter, but through the first day of buck season, my, one of the favorite five day stretches of my year, because in my world, it is all about eating pie and watching football. And, and I love both of those things. In fact, the only thing that could make it any better is if the Cowboys were playing terribly. <laughs> and the Cowboys 
stink. I mean, I don't know if you have noticed, but uh, a couple of days ago, all those huge lines going into the stores, man, piles of people, people falling over, people crawling over one another, all to, all to return their cowboy jerseys. There was so much passion about what people were doing with their cowboy jerseys. And so you've shown up at Baptism Weekend at LCBC, and Baptism Weekend at LCBC is a big, stinking deal. And so the question is, why is it such a big deal? Listen to me. Jesus was the most influential human that ever walked on the face of the earth. You don't have to necessarily believe that he was who he says he was to believe that that's true. You don't necessarily have to believe all that we believe about Jesus, what the Bible says about Jesus, what he claimed for himself, but you kind of have to agree that there was never a human that was more influential on the face of the planet than Jesus Christ. And when you are the most influential human that ever graced the planet, and we have your final words, and you knew that you were speaking your final words as you spoke them, and you knew that they would go viral, those words matter. And so I want to show you the final words of the most influential human that ever walked on the planet. They are recorded for us in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. And uh, Matthew simply says, go and make disciples, no big deal, the word disciple simply means follower, a follower who, who kind of learns from me and becomes like me, and so go and make followers, disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and so there is, there's really no good English word to kind of help us wrap our arms around this word baptism, because when Jesus is using the word, it, it wasn't all religious. It didn't, have, it didn't have religious meaning then. In fact, it's, it's really a concept that predates English. The, the first time that we find the word baptism being used, it was actually a, by being used by a very wise individual who realized that if people were actually going to eat vegetables, you had to do stuff to them. And so he was saying, take vegetables and baptize them in various solutions for which he was giving the recipe so they would take good because they don't (laughs) and so we had the word baptism and then it kind of got religified as people would decide that they wanted to become a part of the Jewish faith. And if you wanted to convert into the Jewish faith, there was a whole process of stuff you had to go through. You had to go to class, you had to pass some, pass some tests, you had to go through some sacrificial system stuff where you had to make sacrifices. There was a ceremonial meal that you had to go through. If you were male, there was a certain matter of a pretty uncomfortable and embarrassing little surgery that had to happen. And then the very last thing that would happen is there would be a ceremonial washing where you would be lowered back into water signifying your old self and raised up out of the water signifying your new self. It was a ceremonial washing or in the common usage of the word of the day, a baptism. And so about 30 AD, this guy makes his entry onto the public scene, and his name was John. And if you want to think of John, think of of someone like Grizzly Adams. That's what John was like. He kind of wore animal skins. He lived off the ground. God had given him a mission to kind of tell people about the new thing that God was doing. And so John would walk around as this man's man kind of guy, and he would say, God is doing a new thing and you can trust his son Jesus Christ to pay for and forgive you of your sin and give you new life and as people heard the message of John and some of them responded and believed what he said John would baptize them in the common usage of the word of the day he would take them out into a river and baptize them to mark the change in their life lowering them into the water as a pre-Christ follower bringing them up out of the water, marking their new life in Christ. And so John's going about his thing. He's just doing his gig. And then Jesus actually shows up to John and says, hey, John, I want you to baptize me. John says, "Uh uh-uh. You're the dude, man. 
That's not right for me to baptize you. You ought to be baptizing me. And so they have this little conversation and Jesus lets John know, man, I've got to lead by example. This has to happen. It's part of your calling. You got to be the one to do this. And so this amazing thing happens in the book of Matthew in chapter three. And so I want you to get there on your Bible. You will find it in the seat Bibles on page 735 or get there on the device that you're carrying. Matthew chapter 3, in verse 13, the Bible simply says, Jesus went from, from, uh, from Jordan to the Galilee, or excuse me, Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. They have their conversation. And then this amazing thing happens as Jesus gets baptized. Watch this. After his baptism, Jesus came up out of the water. The heavens were open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, catch this, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. This is an incredible moment. There is this thing happening between God the Father and Jesus his Son, and as Jesus walks the road that the Father had for him, as Jesus follows the mission that his Father had given to him, and he follows in obedience and he becomes baptized, God the Father has this kind of chest-pounding moment where he wants to announce to the whole world, that's my Son, and I'm proud of him. It is Jesus I'm proud of you moment. And I'm proud of you moments are defining moments in our lives. I've had three sons. Every single one of them improved on the original. And so I know what it's like to be on that side of the I'm proud of you moment. I know what it's like to see one of my boys doing something or being something. And I just want to say to the whole world, that dude, mine. Better than me, better looking more talented, but he's my son. I am so proud of him. I know what it's like to be on the other side of the I'm proud of you moment. And like you, I can remember those times when my dad has pulled me aside and just said to me, eye to eye, man to man, Scott, I am proud of you. Or the penultimate I'm proud of you moment. Right, guys? When our wives grab our arm and just sort of hug it and and keep their arm inside of our arm and sort of reach up and whisper, if sh she's shorter than you, reach up and whisper, hey baby, I'm really proud of you. <laughs> nice, let's go, right? We love that, you should do it more. I'm proud of you moments are huge moments for us. And Jesus is having his I'm proud of you moment. And we're going to celebrate with hundreds of people all across all of our campuses today their I'm proud of you moment with God. Baptism was simply a, a public symbol. That's how it became famous. Baptism is a public declaration of your association with God. It is you driving a stake in the ground that says, hey, I'm standing up publicly and I'm saying I'm a follower of Jesus. Baptism Baptism isn't the thing that saves you. It's not the thing that makes you okay with God. Baptism is just like my wedding ring. I'm married if I don't have my wedding ring on. But I wear my wedding ring as a symbol of my marriage to Bren. The ring is no big deal. It's my fifth one, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> I lost three of them water skiing. One of them got cut off after a bicycle accident. This one Bren got for me on Amazon for 20 bucks. And so it's just a symbol. That's all it is. But it matters because this symbol says to the world that I'm taken. And so if you're, ta if you're attracted to middle-aged sexy fat guys, I can't be yours. I'm taken. It is also a symbol to me. 
I wear it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because every time I notice that it is there, it reminds me of the covenant that I have made that marks my life, the promise, the vow that I have given, and it changes how I behave and how I think and what I do. Listen, wearing a piece of metal around your finger is kind of a silly symbol. I tried to figure out where it started. I got 6,000 years ago, and that's as far as I could get. I'll tell you where it started, some jeweler. <laughs> Thought of this thing. If we melt this stuff down and tell people they need to wear it on their, on their finger, they will. And now it's normal for us. We don't think anything of it. It's a ring, and that's part of our culture. It's the same as baptism. It's a symbol, and frankly, baptism can be a little bit weird. There's nowhere else in our culture where people walk down into a bunch of water and we ask them a question about who they're trusting and then we dip them into the water and we pull them back up out of the water signifying their new life in Christ. It is the same thing. It is a symbol and we do it that way because it's the way Jesus instructed us to do it. It's a display to the world and so here's the deal. If you're a follower of Jesus, you need to get baptized. It's the next step for you, and we're gonna be doing it again in March. And if you haven't done it, go to the next steps area. We'll help you figure it out and move toward that in March. All these folks are saying is I'm on the journey. They are not saying they've got it figured out. They're saying they know where they have placed their faith and they're trusting what Jesus did, not what they are doing. And so they're gonna come up here and they're gonna walk across the stage as you hear their story and they're going to put something on a cross that they wanna say to God to mark this special moment. They will go down into the water and the pastors on all of our campuses will ask them a very simple question. Are you placing your faith in Jesus to save you? When they say yes, we will baptize them, lift them up out of the water, signifying new life, and we'll scream and holler and hoot and holler like crazy, because it's awesome, and it's a celebration, and it is a very big deal. And so you're going to see all kinds of people, as more than 200 of them do this all weekend long. You're gonna see wealthy people and not so wealthy people. You're gonna see older people and not so old people. You're gonna see educated people and not not very educated people, and they're all going to be telling you a story of how they got here. And here's what I want you to remember. God is going to work in those stories in your heart. Because Some of these folks have been through hell on wheels, man. Some of them have come through things that will curl your toenails. And some of you right now are sitting in the middle of a situation and you're not sure God is really being faithful. And so God's gonna say to you in the middle of their story, as I was faithful to them, I am being faithful to you. I know it's hard now. I know you can't see around the corner that I can see around. But as I have been faithful to them, I will be faithful to you. As I have given them brand new life and a new beginning, I offer the same thing to you. And I keep my promises. And so God's going to talk to you through these stories. And we're going to grow together as those stories become a part of our story. And so if you're here this morning, tonight, whenever your gathering is that you're sitting in, and you're in the middle of one of those situations, right after the gathering, if you think that it will help you, we got a bunch of people ready to pray with you. My right, your left, they're there. Stop at the Next Steps area on your way out. We're here to help you take that next one step, because that's what we're about. Let's celebrate some stories and some baptisms together. Let's pray. Almighty God, creator of all heaven and earth, thank you that you are not only a God that is all powerful and holy and sovereign, you are a God that is near and intimate. You are a God that pursues us in the moments of our life with relentless faithfulness and outrageous love of another kind. You are a God that does not look at us based on what we have done, but on what you have done for us if we have trusted you. 
for new life. And so Father, thank you for the new beginnings that we're celebrating with all of these folks that are sharing their story this morning. And thank you, Father, that the faithfulness that you have displayed in each of their lives is faithfulness that you absolutely display in each of our lives because you are a promise-keeping God. And we love you dearly. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hi, my name is Jill. I am 49 years old and live in Palmyra. I have three children, Ashley, who's 31, Janelle, who's 27, and Liam, who's 13. Liam and I started attending LCBC in April of this year when my cousin Wendy asked me to attend a gathering with her. She is in the water with me today. We fell in love with the church and have been attending ever since. My life before I trusted Jesus? In simple terms, you could say I was a lost sheep pregnant with my first child and married at age 17. Shortly thereafter, we had another child. After dealing with years of physical abuse, I left the marriage for a better life for my children. I married again years later, but abuse became my reality again. My children are the only blessings that I had to hold on to during those times of unrest, and I found my strength within them. I came to find Jesus after a particular incident where I hit bottom in my marriage. My very first gathering I attended at LCBC, I felt the message spoke directly to me. It was a series of boundaries, and it spoke to so many things I had been dealing with. The sheep had found her home. In September 2016, I was re-diagnosed with metatastic breast cancer after being in remission for six years. I have had to come to terms with this and am fighting for as long as I can. My choice is to live fully in Jesus and teach my son to trust Jesus as well, as my parents have done for me. I now walk with him in full trust and leave my future in his hands and know that when it is my time, I am loved not only by him, but by so many others. I want my legacy to my kids to be that I am loved as I love them and that I walk with Jesus. Hi, my name is Hunter. I'm 32 years old, currently living in Phoenixville with my wife Amber and six-month-old son Bodie. I have truly been blessed with a loving and supportive family. I am employed with Vanguard as a financial analyst and seeking to get my MBA. Life is busy yet rewarding with our new son, my new job, and the imminent task of house hunting. I grew up in a strong Christian-based home and I'm forever grateful to my mom dad and their joint faith in God. Their example made me realize what is most important in life and making me question my own relationship with the Lord. After one Sunday night service when I was five years old, I remember asking my dad, how do I become a Christian? I prayed with my dad that night and accepted the Lord into my heart as my Savior. I knew from that night on that my life was going to be different and purpose-driven as a child of God. In college, I mostly lived my life as a mediocre Christian, always going back and forth on what I knew to do and what I was actually living out. Meeting my wife in 2008 changed my life for the better, and seeing her zealous spirit for Jesus continually pricks my heart. We strive to have our relationship be as iron sharpening iron and another generation of examples of Christ for our son. I want to quote a Micah Tyler song I heard on the radio the other day. I can't waste a day. I can't stay the same. I want to be different. I want to be changed. Till all of me is gone and all that remains is a fire so bright the whole world can see that there's something different. So come and be different in me.
Hi, my name is Mara. I recently graduated from Penn State and started working as a registered nurse. I was raised Catholic, but I never understood that I could have a personal relationship with God. I was always just going through the motions, but never felt connected. Before coming to trust Jesus, I was always trying to please others, even if it meant losing myself in the process. I was easily influenced by my friends, especially during my freshman year of college. This led me to make bad decisions and do things that were not like me. I had a lot of regrets and was hard on myself. At a low point, I thought I didn't deserve God's love. The summer after, God really started to work in my life. I became close with my best friend, Emily, who was in the water with me. God pushed us together and worked through her to bring me closer in my faith. It was then that I started to realize how much God loves me because he sent her to me when I needed a friend most. She has always been patient with me through this journey. She introduced me to LCBC about a year ago. After attending for the first time, I couldn't stop smiling. I felt a passion in me that I didn't know was possible. I began attending College Age Connect, where I've grown in my faith more. I accepted Jesus as my savior in January. Jesus changed my life by showing me that my worth is in Him, not in how others see me. I feel like I have a purpose now and a voice through Him. I wanna be baptized today to publicly express my commitment to following Jesus for the rest of my life. My name is Dawn. I live in Marietta, work full-time at LGH, and mommy to four amazing boys, ages 15, 13, 10, and six months. Before Jesus, my life had no direction. I was holding a lot of anger, fear, sadness, and regret from years of bad choices which affected me and my children. I heard about LCBC and decided to check it out and continued coming every weekend for almost two years, waiting for Jesus, thinking all I had to do was go to church. I eventually decided to check out Starting Point. The day before class started, I received a call that my mother had passed away. My entire world stopped and my life was turned upside down. I missed the first class, I had no intention to attend the second class. Something was telling me I needed to go. I now know that that something was God telling me starting point is exactly where I needed to be. I was given some advice in class about how simple it actually was to turn my life over to God. All I had to do was talk to him and tell him I trust him. On my drive home, tears falling, missing my mom, feeling like my life was falling apart and I had no control over anything. I just spoke to God out loud and told him that I'm a mess. I surrendered. Since that moment, my life has changed. A sense of calmness came over me that I have never felt before. My problems still exist, but I finally was okay. I talk to him now. I have put him in charge of my life. I want to be baptized to officially surrender my life to God and only God. He has already been doing some amazing things in my life, and I am so excited for the future. My name is Janie, and today is my 56th birthday. Originally from Lancaster County, my husband and I helped raise two beautiful daughters, Megan, who is 29, and Kaylee, who is 27. My marriage has always been a roller coaster ride, having its ups and downs, largely because I would have to work two jobs to help provide for my family. 
However, the past five years has taken a turn for the worst. My husband is an alcoholic, currently living on the streets of Lancaster. My daughters and I found this out the hard way through the constant lies, emergency room visits, doctor's visits, and counseling sessions. I had never felt so empty in my life. However, thanks to the persistence and support of Lori, as well as the encouragement of my former coworker, Carly, who are both with me in the water today, I have found what I needed most, the reconnection and peace with God. I have told them both, you may not have saved my marriage, but you saved me. I started coming to LCBC in March and have only missed two services. Every time I attend is an emotional experience for me. I feel like they are talking directly to me and it has helped me fill the empty void I have felt for so long. In August, I attended the starting point classes. What a lifesaver. My heart has opened up to Jesus and I have formed lifelong friendships. Thankfully, I am beginning to relearn my purpose. I continue to surround myself with people that are supportive and truly care about my well-being. I realize through my journey the importance of family, faith, and love. Today, I want to be baptized not only as the perfect birthday present, but because I want to continue to grow and learn through God. My name is James. I live in Elizabethtown with my wife Candace and two sons, Danny and Noah. My wife started coming to LCBC after having our first son, but I was not interested in attending with her. I was into drinking and smoking weed. I guess you could say I was living the party life, but in my case, the party was always with me alone. Eventually, I got tired of the drinking and started to drift away from it. One Sunday, I decided to go to church with my wife. After that one visit, I decided I wanted to come back. I liked the classes offered for our kids and that it was a big church. I've come to understand that Jesus is the Messiah and he is the only one to give us eternal life. He took away our sin so we could live with him for eternity and so we don't have to live in sin anymore. I love that I can praise and worship him now. Stress makes me want to turn back and buy some liquor, but he makes me think of the bigger picture. I think of my sons and want to be a role model for them. I want them to see me as God-fearing. I want them to follow me as I am now, not who I used to be. I've wanted to be baptized ever since I accepted him into my life, and now I feel loved. Since coming to him, I have never felt alone. Even when I have strayed from him, he has always been there. I'm Cassidy and I'm 22 years old. I'm from Lidditz and just graduated from Millersville University in May. I enjoy playing and coaching softball and spending time with my family and friends. Growing up, I was never baptized, nor did I attend church very often. When I did, it was because I had a kid and had to go with my mom, who was in the water with me today. I was always told there was a God, heaven, and Jesus, but I could never wrap my head around it. Even after asking my mom a bunch of questions, I still was very back and forth with the idea of God. When my mom and I moved to Lidditz in 2006, we discovered LCBC and I started to like coming to church. In 2008, my grandpa died and a lot started to change in my family. He was my hero and I wanted to believe he went to heaven, but I was still skeptical about it being real. That's when I really started to wonder about Jesus. 
A few years went by that I did not attend, but always found myself praying when I wanted something or getting mad at God when things went wrong. Now that I have accepted Jesus into my life, I have been happier, I want to help others, and I trust the path He has for me. I want to be baptized today because I believe this is my next step in fully accepting Jesus as a Savior and to show others that I am truly a life changed by Christ.
once bound have been untied and freedom found these feet have been set free from shackles hold and now they run to calling saviors fall please thank God for what he's done tonight your stories of life change. People have been brought from death to life. It's amazing. If you see somebody in the atrium that has an all-in t-shirt, please thank them for telling their story tonight. Have a great week. We'll see you next week.